Hi, my name is Alex with Tape Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be showing you how to manage permissions in Confluence. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Drop a like if you get any value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Confluence. All right, so in order to do this, um, you're going to have to do this for every single space. I am going to show you kind of just how to do it in one space, but just know that every single one of your spaces can have different permissions. Unlike Jira, where you have a permission scheme that can then be applied to every project, Confluence is a little bit different. Every space can kind of manage its permissions ever so slightly. And I'm just gonna kind of walk you through the quirks. I'll walk you through the Confluence and Confluence, Confluence-isms. I'm going to walk you through the confluence enzymes of how they do permissions over here on this side of the hood. So first, you're going to want to go into your space and you are going to want to be an existing administrator for this specific space. Essentially, if you've created the space or your Jira admin has created the space, only they can configure it first until they grant you power. And I'm going to show you what all that looks like in a second here. So I'm just going to go into any random space. It doesn't matter which one. Obviously, for you, you're going to want to log in to the space that you want to manage these settings in. You'll see over here in the top left corner, we have space settings, and then we have space permissions. Now there's actually two different places to get to this. You can get to it on the left-hand side where you can click on space permissions, or you can come over here to these little grid looking boxes over here, and you'll see that you have general over here. So both of these are pretty, will take you to the exact same space. So I'm just gonna click on that. And once you do that, you'll see that I'm on the free plan. And so that I actually can't grant permissions to anybody, but I can kind of walk you through it even though I can't uh, do this effectively. So let me show you what this looks like here. Space permission is broken up into three different buckets. You're gonna have a group section, an individual section, and an anonymous section. I'm gonna start with anonymous and kind of work my way back. So if we scroll all the way down, I know it is grayed out. In yours, if assuming you're in a paid version, I don't have a paid version of Confluence, I don't use Confluence enough to warrant paying $5 for myself every month, but assuming you're on a paid version of Confluence, you're going to have this anonymous section here. Unfortunately, you can at least still see it. Let me kind of move my little picture out of the way. And so you still can see it kind of just maybe you had to squint a little bit, but it's here. It's just going to be bold on yours. An anonymous access. This is a very interesting setting. This basically allows so that you can create a page to be externally facing to the world, to the internet. You want to be very careful here. There's some pros and there's a lot of cons. From a pro, if your engineering team or somebody, your marketing team, anybody within your company is actively working on like FAQs, how-to guides, things of that nature, just information that you do want to intentionally share with the public and it's something you don't want to put on your public-facing website, you can actually configure Confluence with this anonymous access to basically serve as a, as a website, a public website that people can go to and they'll be able to see whatever content you've allowed in there. So that anonymous access, no license is required. Anybody can see it. And, and it's really, really powerful from that perspective. And let me show you a good example of this. So if you go over to Old Street Solutions, uh, let's just go custom charts for Jira uh, documentation. So if I go to their documentation page, you're gonna see that when I go to this page not found, it's actually redirecting me to an Atlassian website. So you can see that this is atlassian.net slash wiki. And this is essentially what your space is, but with your domain. And you can see that I'm actually on a Confluence page. This is Confluence and I can see things. They have intentionally opened up this space with public access so that folks can come in here and read through the documentation. This is good, right? Except for when you want to not show proprietary information or confidential information that shouldn't be made public. So just because you can expose your confluence to the internet doesn't mean you always should. And you want to be very, very careful when you're looking at this permission, because this is a surefire way to basically create an entry point for cybersecurity attacks or just a, just a vulnerability in your environment. So very, very carefully, with big asterisks here, just use at your, use with caution, use very, very carefully. Don't 
allow anonymous access to like every space, be very particular about which spaces and be very intentional with what you expose to the internet. It's a scary place out there. Next up, we have individual users. So these are going to be actual individuals. These are going to be one-on-one -on -one folks that are given access to your space. This is okay when you don't want to use groups, which we're going to talk about next. But when you just want to very specifically give access to one or two key individuals, or more often when you want to define the administrators of this space, I recommend you do it via individual users. And so when you add an individual user, you actually have a button right about here that allows you to put in a user's name. And then once you put their name, you can essentially click add and then the page is going to refresh and then their name is going to be added in here with one exception. It's going to have a bunch of check boxes along this little section here. And only the, only the all for view is going to be selected from there for this, for each individual that you add, you're going to have to define the following permissions. So let me kind of walk you through what these permissions are. So the view all is essentially going to allow you to see all the pages in the space. Delete own basically means that if they create a page and they kind of regret it and they're the author, they can delete it themselves. If you don't select this, then they won't be able to do that. Add pages, probably very key. This makes it so that they can actually add a page in Confluence because if they don't have this permission, then all they're going to be able to do is view, which is that first checkbox, but they're not going to be able to add pages. Archive, this is the ability to basically not delete the page, but just archive it. I typically give these to anybody just because it, the information is not going to be deleted. But the delete pages, this I don't give to everybody. This is something that you want to reserve to just very few, few people because you don't want anybody to just be able to go into your confluence and be able to delete pages. The blog, not going to lie, feature I've never used. I usually give it to anybody just because I haven't used it. There's probably a high probability they're never going to use it either. Same thing with the delete pages though. I don't give them delete unless they're an admin. The add comments, I give this one to everybody because this gives anybody the ability to basically go to any page and if they have an opinion, they can add a comment or if they want to contribute to the conversation, they can do so like that. Similar to the delete of pages and blogs, I don't typically give this out to anybody except if you're the administrator. Similar story is happening here with the attachments. We can add attachments, we can upload attachments, but don't give everybody the right to be able to delete them using the other one. Now, this is where things get interesting over here on the right hand side. Those first sections are going to be the same whether you're doing an individual or whether you're doing a group and you kind of want to be very careful, very, very prescriptive there. But this last half here, this restrictions, melon space, these are the probably the most important restrictions. You want to be very careful who can add restrictions. This is not something you just want to give to everybody. Adding restrictions is a subset of permissions. I'm going to have a dedicated video where I cover page restrictions in detail, but just to kind of give you a high level overview is you can manage space permission, which is what we're doing here, which is basically the gate around your space. You're going to control who can come in and out of that gate. Once you're in the ecosystem, once you're inside your space, you're going to have access to a bunch of different pages. What you can then manage at a page to page level. So every little item inside of that gated community, every single one of those, you can put a lock and a key on every single one of those little pages or each of those little houses. And this makes it very challenging to manage because if you give the ability to add restrictions to somebody, they can essentially lock as many keys and doors and houses as they want within that space but only they can kind of unlock it. So even though you're the space admin, even though you're the site admin, even though you're the org admin, unless you're on the premium version of Confluence, you're not going to be able to like, you don't have a master key. You have to pay extra to get the master key. So it has been very, very smart there. So be very careful because you can have essentially folks that have access to your Confluence space and then just kind of go rogue. They can just add restrictions and lock things up. And then you're going to get all kinds of emails from people asking for access. And you're like, I can't add access unless you upgrade to the premium version of Confluence. So be very careful who you enable to have restrictions in that space. The mail is not so important. This is basically just who can like send emails from Confluence. Not too important. Um, I don't, I don't typically give this to everybody. I just leave it to the space admin, but the ability to export a space is very important too, because sometimes you want to carbon copy your space and you want to take it with you. 
And so if you have a disgruntled employee that's leaving, there's nothing stopping them from basically taking an export. It, it exports as a zip file, and then they can essentially go stand up their own confluence and import it there, and they can have it. So again, restrict this to very, very few people. And then the final thing, which is really where I should have led with, is you have the admin to the space, which allows you to do everything we're talking about. If you select that checkbox, all the other checkboxes automatically get selected because they're going to be able to do everything. So you, that's kind of what this breakdown is for. Now, the group is exactly the same thing up above. The only difference is that you're adding a group instead of a user. I do want to keep in mind that by default, though, every unless you go and change this, and we can do a future video on how to do this, but by default, when you create a space, the Confluence users is automatically added to have a lot of power. They have basically read-write power. They don't have delete. As you can see, the deletes are deleted here, but they do have read write so that basically means that the moment that you grant a confluence license to a new user they're automatically going to be able to see any space that is following this um, permission scheme which technically i said at the beginning doesn't have one but i guess i was wrong because it does have as some sort of a it's not really a scheme it's just like a permission thing so anyways that's pretty much it for this video. And that kind of walks you through the different access and permissions and how you can configure groups or users or anonymous access. Hopefully it was beneficial. Hopefully me breaking down that section of what do these different permissions mean? What are all these little check boxes? What do they do? What are they for? Hopefully that's all clear to you now. And if it is, and if you've gotten this far and you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel tremendously. Also a thumbs up, a like goes a really, really long way. So if you could take a second here to hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, much appreciated. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.